This is a 2005 Mercedes-Benz E320. It has 221 horsepower and 232 pound-feet of torque. It does 0 to 60 in just 6.3 seconds. It cost just under $50,000 in 2005 and is one of the best luxury sedans of the early 2000s. I have borrowed this E320 from a viewer here in the suburbs of DC. So today I'm going to show you its quirks and features and then I'm going to get out on the road and give it a dog sport. <laughs> and for more of my thoughts on this E320, visit my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer where I've compiled a list of the cheapest Mercedes E-Classes for sale currently on Autotrader. I'll start with a quick overview. Now this E-Class was known to enthusiasts as a W211 and was produced from 2002 to 2009. They were sold in sedan and wagon versions. There were several variants from the base model which I have here and the E550 all the way up to an insane AMG model. The new redesigned E-Class brought a new standard of luxury and performance for Mercedes and it's sold well across North America and Europe. They are known to have some reliability issues, although the owner has told me he has none after routine maintenance. I'm going to start under the hood. Now this car has a 3.2 liter V6 with 5-speed automatic transmission. This car has a plastic cover over the engine, as most modern cars do. It also has six plastic dots across it, presumably for each of the six cylinders. There's also a label just above the radiator that shows a warning not to put your hand or tie in the fan. It's strange. Perhaps the most notable characteristic of the E320 is its styling, which all starts with the headlights. Now the W211 was the first E-Class to have four headlights across the car. They are oval shaped, with the outer one being larger than the inner one. And they are halogen, as are most headlights from the era. Gives the car a distinct and recognizable look. I really like them. Here's what the turn signals look like. The grille is short and wide with of course the Mercedes hood ornament on top and this is also where the hood latch pops out. Now I'm going to move to the trunk of the car, which is actually pretty spacious. If you look under here, latch it up, you see that there is approximately 16 cubic feet of cargo space with little nets on the side. And this is actually where the yeah, navigation disc goes and the battery for the vehicle. Now I'm going to dive into the interior with all of its quirks and features. You can see around the vehicle, there's a nice wood finish that goes all the way around and through the center console. The vehicle also has leather seats in both the drivers and passengers and rear. Now I'm going to talk about the command system. Now at the time, this was really technolo technologically advanced, but today it's really outdated. Let me show you, let me scroll through and show you. It is not touch screen, instead you use these 10 buttons on the side to go through the different screens. Now what's really odd is the placement of these uh, selections on the sides. Now it seems like they're placed almost randomly. Let me show you. So if I want to change the audio from radio to the CD, for example, I go to here, and there's three on this side, but one on this side. And then if I go to CD, they're placed one here, two here, and three over here. It just doesn't make sense. I don't understand why Mercedes would design like that, but that's how it is. Not surprisingly, the climate controls are not digital. Instead, you use the dial and turn this around from colder to warm and you turn up and down using these buttons. This is the air circulation, this is the rear defroster, front defroster, and this is to turn off the system entirely. And instead of off, Mercedes decided to put zero, which is another quirk and feature. One of my favorite quirks and features of this car is the CD player. Now when you press this button right here, the CD thing pops out and you have six different options and you can put in six different CDs which is really advanced for the time. And you just press this button and it goes back in. This car has lots of interior storage space and one of those places is right here. When you flip up this latch it opens and in here is a Nokia port. That's right, not an iPhone or an Android port, a Nokia port from 2005. Then when you open up the left side of this, instead you lift the whole thing up and there's even more space underneath of it.
Now this car has a standard speedometer and tachometer, but it also has an analog clock on the left. You can also see the amount of gasoline in the car, and you can also see the engine temperature on the right in Celsius. Interestingly, the odometer is digital, and there's also a screen above it that scrolls through various things. Right now I have it set on temperature, but you can also scroll through to various things, such as your speed, or the service that's due next. Now this car also has automatic headlights, which is advanced for the time, but it also has rear and front fog lights. If I turn it to the right, it's just the standard headlights. If you pull it out one, it's the front fog lights, but if you pull out one more time, it's the rear fog lights. And since it's a European car, it was probably mandated for that. Another quirky feature of this car is the first aid kit that came. If you open up the storage compartment under the passenger seat, you'll see this package labeled Mercedes-Benz first aid kit. If you open it up, there's all band-aids and various stuff that came with the car. I was browsing through the owner's manual and the various pamphlets. On page 3 of the vehicle care guide, it says, The visual presence of a well-maintained Mercedes-Benz is an emotional experience. I don't think that was translated very well. Alright, driving the Mercedes-Benz E320. Already I can tell this car handles pretty well. Okay. I hate this road. Yes, you. Oh, jeez. Now it's time for the Doug score. I'm going to start with the weekend category. I really like the car's styling, and it looks good even today, so I'm going to give it an 8 for styling. The E320 is quick, but not that fast compared to the other cars I reviewed. It gets a 4 for acceleration. The steering is sharp and turns corners very well. I'm giving it an 8 for handling. The E320 is no sports car, but it is a well-designed luxury sedan that looks classy. I'm giving it a 6 for cool factor. While the redesigned E-Class was revolutionary for Mercedes, the base model E320 was not the most notable of the lineup and it gets a 4 for importance. Now I'm going to move to the daily category. At the time, the car came loaded with new features, but today most of it is found in all cars. However, it does have power seats and plenty of interior storage, so it gets a 5 for features. The ride is very smooth and the seats are nice, so I'm giving it a 7 for comfort. Mercedes did not cheap out with this car, and all the materials are solid and luxurious. With barely any plastic in the vehicle, it gets an 8 for quality. The E320 is spacious for a sedan with a fair amount of trunk and passenger space, but ultimately it is not as roomy as an SUV. It gets a 5 for practicality. This car has depreciated in value over time, and maintenance will still be costly. It gets a 4 for value. Add it all up, and the Doug score is 59 out of 100. This puts it right around their other German sedans, such as the 2004 BMW M3. And for more money. <laughs> it's just a geek. Why can't I see reliability? Now I'm going to talk about the command system. They are oval shaped, with the outer one being bigger than the smaller one. <laughs> inner, inner one. 